So I don't know if we have any supercomputer guy in our network, but doing AI augmented design might yeah. be interesting for people. Yeah, it's um, definitely on the end list. Like if you talk about collaboration ecology from augmented reality instructionals, where you take, say, pictures of it. And I mean, I think that's low hanging fruit in some way. Uh, the question is having bodies on the team, which we don't have right now. Like, um, and that's where the idea of the incentive challenge looks really promising. But also the COVID thing right now, we can probably get larger teams to collaborate on this if, if there's a clear yeah. point of uh, activity that we can do. Like... If there's some big gap that we think we can address in a in a medical equipment needed or anything that we can do through our efforts, yes, it's a time where we can probably get a lot of people on board. So having the collaboration protocols that we have, we can probably leverage a lot of people. But the bottom line is like numbers, like same same as last last steam camp in New Zealand. I mean, we were pretty much isolated. Um, and actually, literally, I actually had to, uh, they actually quarantined my ass. <laughs> so we had to do it at the place where I was staying. Uh, they wouldn't, like the first two days, it was a weekend. So we did it at the school. But then on Monday, we had to leave the school uh, in New Zealand. So we were kind of like working alone, given the time difference. And and that's the, the, the message there is we need bodies. Like we need to in, improve the number. So it's a kind of a... Uh, chicken and egg argument here. We need numbers. I think the numbers issue is going to get addressed through the the incentive challenge, which we don't know where that stands, given like how you know, however, the COVID affects that. But uh, definitely for doing like augmented reality or artificial intelligence, that's just some of the things to add to the package. Um, some of the discussions from New Zealand was starting chapters like we had a good conversation with Massey University for example uh, they're talking about robotic tractors like they're actively working on that and they wanted to collaborate like and and then if we do an OSC club we'd focus on getting one project across everybody so we're actually have enough development effort in order to make it feasible and also for example in the states Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute I talked to those guys the open they have an open source club there and we're talking about okay let's start a chapter OSC chapter and they were also quite interested in the tractor part so there's you can focus people on like larger projects uh, and I do want to definitely get a lot of people on that now with the, the virus thing uh, that's a different opportunity right now that we can explore in terms of what we can do right now now I think the best thing right now would be to decide, okay, what is a very specific direction we can definitely take and, and leverage the current situation to make it happen? Because, for example, uh, I talked to Colby, who's one of our board of directors members. Uh, we were talking along the lines of, okay, if there's things we can do to provide printers for medical equipment printing, say, to hospitals or whatever, um, whatever the, the good opportunity exists, we should look into that and think about what the real needs are, what the real opportunities are for what this, what open source can contribute to the, to the equipment pool part. So I, I really need to sit down on that a little bit at least and study the materials and see what's okay. What is actually feasible to do at this particular time? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so kinda, maybe we can list all of the different um at least so far known things which we can work on and then review them and, and uh in terms of impact and feasibility and then come up with three or two or, or maybe even one product depending on how large they are uh, yeah. and try to get that one for the next workshop but i think it's good to to really look it through um there are definitely a lot of people who are looking at how to make ventilators a lot of those products are quite Crappy. Um, some of them are, are good. Um, so if we want to copy that um, or do our own thing um, or collaborate with, with that, or if there's maybe even something which is necessary, but no one has thought about it yet. Um, yeah. But... Yep. Yep. Uh, let me start this document COVID 
R&D priorities. But I think the thing is clear that, yeah, we have to kind of shift some energy to this and, and see if yeah. whether we can definitely have an impact somewhere or do we do we just continue business as usual, but probably not, not business as usual because I think there are very clear routes. Um, so let's share this then. Let me paste that. Um, into the work doc, into the chat there. So take a look at that. All right. Yep, can you still hear me? Yeah, let's see. You guys still there? Okay, good. Um, Michelle, what what else do you want to do? You want to bring up some other topics? You, did you hear what we were just talking about right now? Uh, yeah, I've been following uh, for a uh, quarter of an hour or something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, there are some initiatives going on uh, over here also, or probably international. Yep. Um, so yeah, I was starting to look into the subject matter a bit. I don't know if I can contribute because it's quite delicate, delicate. Like designing a ventilator. I sh wouldn't know how to start it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's the same same deal, same overall process. The, the open source product development process starting from standard techniques. Uh, that's uh, represented in uh, the development template that we use. It's like you start with Okay, what are the study of the industry standards requirements? I mean, what are we looking at in the first place? Identify what is the product and then go from there. Uh, and then seeing if we have something to contribute to that. Like, I, I definitely think we could because the thing that, that definitely is going to happen here is, um, well, outside of open source projects, the thing that where the open source projects become very relevant is people taking advantage of the situation and, and the equipment either being inaccessible by being expensive and so forth like that so there's i think there's some duty we have to make sure that okay if we can do something to to make it accessible or inexpensive we should we should do it at whatever level that is um, at least by making people aware of what's possible so what i did want to do is for osc just write up a, a document okay say you want to get into development here's here's the various things that you can do uh, i think if we have the bodies, we can definitely leverage the kind of process that we do know to coordinate that effort. So um, let's see what can be done. First thing is to kind of identify. So on a... Uh-huh. So... Okay. So there's a bunch of devices there. Um, I wonder maybe if um, no, it might not work. Uh, there's a list of uh, initiatives um, on the Pure Beer Foundation wiki. Yep. Um, I'll paste it. Yeah, and they also have a uh, database of volunteers. Uh, last time I checked, it was like two or 1,200 people uh, with contact information um, for people who want to volunteer for COVID-19 projects. Yep. Uh, um, 
you uh, you faced uh, you uh, posted uh, the Hackaday uh, thing. I, I suppose oh, was it you, Marson? Uh, yeah. So so everything like I, I did a thread on um, OSC Workshops page. It's all in that thread. So I'll paste that thread yeah. in there. Ultimate uh, medical hackathon. Shut the borders here in Belgium. They you did. Leave the when? Country if you don't have uh, today. Oh wow! You can't leave the country without uh, the, the necessary papers. Yeah, if you have like papers from your employer or something, there's a certain uh, exceptions, but uh, in general, you, you can't leave the country anymore. Yeah. 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 closed here now uh, universities are closed for the rest of the of the year are they having remote classes or people just yeah, go yeah, home and get drunk no 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 they're gonna organize uh, remote classes uh, but uh, yeah, the, the buildings are closed yeah but the schools the schools are closed my daughter is at home also uh, she, she has uh, like tasks that she has to do with uh, within a few weeks but uh, yeah, the future is pretty, pretty uncertain. Everything is closed down. It's like a ghost town here. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, I can still walk my dog. That's not prohibited. <laughs> it could be in the next few days. <laughs> yeah. There was a local firm that makes uh, um, like breed, breeding equipment, respirators, uh, that, that designed uh, a basic uh, a basic model with off-the-shelf parts uh, that can be produced very fast. They started production now. But For I what? Don't know For what device? Source. I've, I've heard it on the radio. I have to look it up. Uh, uh, heard it just uh, an hour ago or something like that. Yeah. But uh, I don't. I don't think it's it's uh, it's going to be open source. Yeah, and that's the that's the part we gotta in. address. You know, like like this sh bullshit about profiting from a misfortune here. Yeah, I mean that that's where we gotta step in. It's just you know that's gonna happen all over the place. So we gotta step in on that kind of stuff. Um, it's definitely there's a lot of potential for that kind of abuse happening. So, what else? Um, yeah, so there's a bunch of stuff. Um, I guess we probably want to start by studying the, the open source COVID equipment Facebook group, that document there. Take a look at some of the things in the OSC workshops thread there. There's a bunch of good stuff there. Um, and then come up with some plan of actions. Like, like for example, <clears throat> do hospitals need, like, if hospitals are going to run out of equipment, what, what is that? And what, what can 3D printers fill in there? Is there any consumable parts or anything else? I was thinking that uh, what I can do here is, so the high temperature chamber, like nylon, like for printing nylon, nylon's more uh, more medical grade than PLA or whatever. So I was thinking that maybe right here, get get the high temperature chamber built. I mean, I, th I think I can prototype that in a matter of days and actually get high temperature material printing if that's necessary um, within days. So 
within closed chamber. Well, we should definitely think about uh, uh, open source medicine in general. Yeah, yeah. I was saving that for 2028, but you know we have a <laughs> acute case right now. Yeah. Maybe I tried to make paracetamol once. <laughs> It's, it didn't go so well when we analyzed the molecules. I got two other molecules. I have no idea which they were, so don't recommend it. Yeah. Um. And there's another document I added in the Slack also, which is more like general. It's, it's quite it's quite long, but like with uh, uh, forecasting um, what we might expect in the coming years and so. Uh, also talks a little bit about, about mutations and, and such. Um, it's not maybe directly related, but it's good context. Um, mm -hmm. Share that one as well. Um, yeah. So if we read that one and, and the other document and then go through all of the um, materials which are listed and then uh, make an assessment based on that. Um, I think it's a good start. And also, another really good action would be if we manage to find people who actually work uh, frontline, like the ones who are closest to the patients, because they might be the best source of. It yeah. might, we might end up like every everyone in the maker community three D printing um, thousands of face masks when in reality maybe they need yeah. something completely different. Exactly. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, and next to the, the whole Corona thing, uh, the, the economy is getting uh, hit pretty bad. So, yeah. Uh, we should uh, not completely focus, but uh, what are we gonna do uh, when uh, this whole thing is over? You know, yeah. The supply lines from China. Well, yeah, it's it's all uh, a lot of uncertainty. Yeah? yeah. Well, definitely, it's it's uh, also a great great chance to move forward some of the discussion on on resilience and mm. self sustainability sufficiency kind of things or just yeah, more, yeah more local economies uh, uh, production distributed general, production uh, yeah everything is produced in china you see what can happen huh? right and right people will realize that in the future yeah yep um okay so what else what else to cover here i i want to just get into reading those documents and and seeing if we have any kind of a plan to to follow up on or what what we can do something as a concrete point we can develop yeah um on another topic so where are we when in terms of uh, social media um uh, i saw that we got an answer um that Facebook was not recommended, but if we continue with that, um, and shall we continue with that, with, with uh, the Facebook Pixel project um, as a way to to advertise open source ecology? Um, in that case, well, it's we need and. Both. Yeah. It's and all the time, right? So it's both, right? So, yeah. Um, so in that case, we need a Facebook from you, Mark Martian, a Facebook business account, and then that's uh, if I'm gonna start setting up the pixel, if you can grant me access to the to that the through Facebook. The Facebook business web page. Yes, I mean um, we have the OSC Facebook page. You know, you know that, right? Sorry. You know we have the OSC Facebook page, right? Yeah, um, workshop page. But um, um, no, no, yeah. that's a group. I'm talking about the page. I'll click on that. Open Source Ecology. So there, see that? All right. 
Yeah, um, but um, it's a different, like a business manager is a different uh, no. what, Yeah, what do I need to do on there? More, more choices. What do I need to do with that account there? Is that what you're so, talking about? Yeah, I can resend it. Um, there are some instructions, I think, in the previous email on the different steps which are necessary in order to get going with a Facebook pink pixel. Um, OK. So you can't reach it through the normal Facebook login page. OK, OK. Um, are we getting into issues like if we, so with the pixel, do, are we in trouble because we can't do that like michael was saying about oh he doesn't want to install that or whatever like we don't want to be using that uh, how are we getting around that issue there if we're going to use that technology then i don't think we can get around it so in that case it would be that we basically don't use it and we, we use um only keywords um and we can try different keywords a maximum one or two keywords per ad so that we can see which keyword it is that actually works. Uh -huh. um, if we're going to track people, then, then we need to use cookies and, and uh, Facebook Pixel, uh, which then use that information to, to find lookalike audiences mm -hmm. um, for the Facebook ads. But we can't use lookalike audiences for the Facebook ads if we don't use the, the, um, the cookies on, on the web page. On the web page, meaning opensourceecology.org? Yeah. And how do we, um, do we have to install any plugins or do, that's just a text into some of the pages? So there is a WordPress plugin which um, can be installed, um, either that one or just copying in some, some text. Um, but the plugin is probably most convenient to use. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so let's... Um... How do we go about that? So I think a, a case, a logical case, like for example, if we were to explain this to the public, why are we doing that? And what's the advantages or disadvantages of using Pixel? Like, of course, the privacy issues. Uh, can you mm -hmm. write something up on that so we have a public yeah. statement on that? And that way... Um, we can cover our ass for the radicals on a team. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm also like really, uh, but but it's like it's almost impossible to uh, to create a new world without moving resources well, from the previous. Oh, absolutely, and I, and I think so. So can you can you write that up? Like I think yeah. you, you you got the idea there. The idea is yes. In order to transform the system, you have to dive deep into the the current one. That yeah. I mean that's a clear. So we have to just make that clear as our kind of like our policy that that's how we roll here. Um, what else do I have as an insight on that? Um, yeah, I mean, basically, the quicker we want to create an alternative to Facebook, the more we have to love Facebook. So that love, I shouldn't call it love. Tolerated, but. <laughs> so that when we kindly drag the knife later across its heart, we won't feel so bad. <laughs> right. Oh, whatever. Yeah. But, but yeah, we gotta. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, we have to master this spectacle to end the game. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Let's 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 do that. Uh, I'll write something something which is not too radical, but still to the point. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. Um, yeah. And we can we can, uh, we can re let's review that and then. Um, yeah share that with our community like how we how we want to roll about this because yeah we we want to use the tools that are available simply yeah okay yeah. um yep okay so let's do that and all right point. and yeah i think we should yeah let's see what we need to do on and then also like just include in that the operational things like what exactly does that entail for the face like say you were documenting this for somebody else who's going to start who's going to do that like think of it okay you're documenting it for me or somebody that will implement it so also what are the steps to do it mm. which means that we're documenting it not just for ourselves but say say we have a chapter or somebody else that starts their page and they want to do that on their page we're also yeah. covered for that because that's uh, to summarize the issue on a chapter is like the 
the main message I got in terms of my learnings from New Zealand is it's the numbers. It's like we're not getting those numbers. We need those. And for that, things like the chapters where we coordinate everybody on the same project and you see clear visible velocity forward, that's a way to do it. So start with yeah. a bigger project and you align a lot of people to it. So like, for example, this Facebook, if that's the pixel stuff, uh, instructions for how we align all of us to do that. Um, so that just documenting it. What, what needs to happen there. I didn't uh, catch the last sentence, but I think I got the gist of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we document it as if we're thinking about replication by others, which is yeah. which is the case for chapters or any of the replications in the future. Yeah. 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 OK. Sounds good. Um, Michelle, anything else we got to cover? I know I got to respond to your your email. I think we're cool on that. Um, anything else you want to oh. bring up about it or about anything or? Uh, yeah, uh, the, the calculation, I, I made a mistake in the calculation. Um, yeah, uh, I was going to mail you uh, about it uh, today. Um, so yeah, for the rest, just uh, give me some feedback maybe on uh, what I said in the mail. Yeah. And uh, because I, I um, added like the, the expense of, of the parts that I bought for myself I, uh, with the question, isn't that like, uh, shouldn't it be uh, that my parts are included in the in the expenses that I made? Uh, but that uh, takes away part of the, of the profits that are made. So I didn't cal recalculate that. So. I have to look into that. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll straighten that out. I can feed back on some of that. Okay. Yeah, so let's keep rolling. Okay. Let's uh yeah. let's let's continue the meetings on, on Friday. That would be good. And in the meantime, let's just keep communicating. I'm gonna try to wrap my head around the whole thing. Yeah, this I mean this is definitely major disruption, major shift in, in thinking here because we gotta pretty much shift our energies to a little bit of a different well yeah. Yeah, I was uh, trying to get uh, up to speed again. I was pretty sick uh, a few weeks ago. I don't know, maybe uh, I already had it. Had it. Uh, it was like the same symptoms. So, um, but uh, I was getting uh, a bit up to speed again. But now with the whole, yeah, with the whole lockdown and, and uh, the place I work uh, is closed down. Also, I can still go and work there, but. Uh, we were all organizing some workshops for children and stuff, yeah. and it's all it's all finished for the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are the German guys? Do, are they still gonna run it at HSU? Uh, I have to mail them also because I, I probably can't not. Go. I can't leave the country, uh, so yeah. Yeah, I mean that's uh, probably canceled if it's. I Any. think I don't know if the universities in in Germany. It was in the university they were yeah. gonna organize it, so. I don't know if the, they're closed down, and they will uh, will be closed down probably uh, in a week. So probably. No, yeah. yeah. Mm. They can work on the respirators also. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We'll see. Yeah. So let's get a good idea of what what is meaningful for us to work on. Let's let's all uh, do that. Mm -hmm. uh, put that into the document there, like. Uh, the doc I started there. Let's continue that doc. That's a good deal. Um, let's see. Did um, yeah. Wait. Did I instead of copying the presentation presentation template? Oh. Okay. Let is me make, it, make is this copy. original? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, let me make a copy. Entire presentation. So this is the COVID-19 OSC work doc. And let me just share that. Okay. Yeah, share that. Anyone can edit. Okay, go into that one instead.
embedded that in Andreas log. So you can copy from that. All right. All right, so good good for now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, same hour next week? Yeah, or, uh, yeah. Keep it at that same time. Okay. 7 o'clock is a bit too early for me, but, uh, well, I can adapt. Um, do you want to have it later? Because that would work for, for Nielsen. Well, 7 o'clock is normally the dinner time, more or less. Um, it's uh, 8 o'clock, uh, 1 o'clock for you, Marson. Is that okay? Well, right now, this was 1. So oh. you're saying 2. There's a 7 hour difference normally, isn't there? I guess six, six right now with the daylight savings. So maybe I'll do that. Okay. Okay. Change uh, it to two. Well, yeah, if it's possible. Yeah, let's do that. So the same for you. For you, uh, eight o'clock is uh, better. Okay, so I saved it. All following events. Yes, send it to all the participants. Okay. All right, so... I'll... Okay, see you next week then. Okay, and yeah, and communicate in the meantime. Over the what? webs. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I will be quite quite busy until April, because I have to close things down here, but I'll, I'll try to um, get started on what we talked about. Yeah, so April, you're pretty much going to start full-time? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll Good see evening. what we can do. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Adapt to the new situation. Uh, yeah. What can we do? Yep. See you later. All right, guys. See you. Take Bye. care. Have a good day.